Hi there, everyone. Hey, how are you? Welcome to the Reimagine Noosa Enduro it's 2021. Back. Yep, it's back. Very excited to be here. Very excited that it's uh, it's all managed to go ahead and uh, we're all systems go. So um, if you've just got to Noosa, welcome. If you already live here, um, well done. <laughs> Um, so just a brief introduction to the to the safety briefing today. Um, the purpose of it is just to really let you guys know what's out there, let you, go, let you guys know what to expect, and um, yeah, just go over a few of the rules and, and regulations of the event. Um, first of all, I just want to thank sponsors that got on board yeah. with this event from the very start. Um, we just got so much support and it was fantastic. So thank you to all of them. Thank you to all you, all of you guys that have shown faith in us to bring back this this great event. Um, couldn't have done it without you. Obviously, we've got you know some border restrictions which have have changed a lot, um, especially for a lot of the participants that were, that were supposed to be here and some of the sponsors. But um, luckily, we're still able to go ahead. Weather looks fantastic. Perfect. We've had a lot of rain this uh, this winter, but it's all dried out. Tracks are mint. <laughs> It's, it's been conditioned now, mm -hmm. so we're all very lucky. Um, so just to go through uh, a little bit around the event, firstly, um, about the, the village. Uh, look, there is limited parking there, so come nice and early. I mean, the ideal scenario is to park off-site somewhere um, and then just ride in. If you're local, ride in. Um, but there is some parking available there. One is, is a little bit down the road, about 500 metres, the old Sunshine Coast tape. It'll be signed, posted. And it's five dollars to park there um and then there's also parking at the actual village as well but very limited parking um rego is open from 10 a.m tomorrow until 6 p.m um obviously we've got a lot of people to get through so if you can get down tomorrow to get your stuff uh please do so if you need to pick up some a pack for your friend or something that that's no problem um and then we will have rego open from 5 30 a.m the yep. morning of the of the event on saturday um uh check your map on the um on the tech guide if you need any confusion about where to go once you reach the the, the sports complex check your rego first so all the participation list is online check and make sure you're in the right race and the right category um that's really important if you do that now and let us know then it, it's going to make rego a whole lot smoother yep absolutely um so uh police rules out on the road guys this is not a closed road event um, and there is a lot of time where you are on public roads so road rules do apply yep. um which means you see a car coming you stop if um there's 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 about four or five points on the course where there is actually traffic control of stopping cars you'll see that that's fantastic but if a if a volunteer is there and then of course marshal tells you to stop you you stop and there's actually one point where, where we dismount, which Bob will go through uh, in a second. On McKinnon Drive, McKinnon Drive is the first big road that you come on when you exit the sports precinct. Um, it's about a 500 metre stretch. There's no overtaking allowed on McKinnon Drive. So we've built a de designated cycle lane make out of cones. So you'll stay in the cycle lane. You don't roll out into the, onto past the fog line, which is the edge of the road. Stay in your designated uh, uh, cycle lane and no overtaking because we it's not really wide enough for two abreast. Yeah, and there's another section where you come onto McKinnon Drive again, which is about uh, three or four kilometres after that, which is a bit longer section. Again, no overtaking, please. Um, so the, the course has been really well uh, marked out. Um, Bob's going to go through that in a minute, but please download the latest GPX files off the website. Um, get them on your bike computer. That's a, a great backup. Um, if you ever think you're going the wrong way, just look down at your computer, you'll see that you're, you're still on the track or you're not on the track. Um, if you've downloaded that GPX file before 9 a.m. yesterday, you'll need to re-download it because there's been a couple of minor changes. So make sure you re-download the latest GPX file, yep. have it on your computer, and then you know you're going to be you're going the right way. And also just bring your phone if you can. Having a phone in your back pocket is great insurance for whatever, whatever goes wrong yep. out there. Um, be aware, look, so the, most of this course is on the Noosa Trail Network. The Noosa Trail Network is a connection of public roads, fire trails, um, Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service areas, forestry areas, and privately owned land that all connects into this network around the Noosa hinterland. 
But so these trails, are, sometimes you're on someone's actual house, their private land. So be aware there will be other people around. These tracks and trails and roads are not closed. If you see someone on horseback, you see someone riding in the other direction, whatever they're doing, they're allowed to be out there. So please give way to them. Please be aware. Um, there are a lot of gates and a, and a couple of log hopovers that you'll come across on the on the ride. They should all be open. Um, the log hopovers you will we'll have to dismount and get over. And we have one creek crossing, which should be very, very low. So you might get some wet feet for half an hour, um, but probably not. <laughs> Um, just be aware that, like I said, that you're out here in this, the natural wildlife, there is some potential for cattle or wildlife out there. Please be aware. I've never seen any. Uh, people that have lived here a lot longer than me have never seen any, but they're out, they, in theory, are out there, so be careful. Please don't litter. This, this event's only been able to go ahead because of the support of Queensland Parks and Wildlife and local people that we are going to run a clean and environmentally friendly race. So... There is um, recycling bins, compost bins, everything at all the checkpoints, at the village. It's a, it's a plastic-free Noosa event. Um, we really put your rubbish in your pocket, get to the checkpoints, put it in the proper bin. Job done. Um, everyone's been given a drink bottle if you don't have one. I don't know who wouldn't, but if you don't have one, you get given a drink bottle at the start. Please refill it at all the stations. Um, we'll have water at the stations, sports drink at the stations, and some food. So... Um, do the right thing with your with your rubbish. Please stay on the trails. It's, it's pretty clearly marked where you need to go. Don't deviate from the trail too much. Um, there's toilets available at the first two checkpoints, checkpoint one and checkpoint two, not at checkpoint three. Um, so if you need to go, you go there. The, the first checkpoint is only one single toilet, but if you're really desperate and there's a line, you can go down to Stan Hopper Park, Stan Topper Park, sorry, in Pomona, which is about 200 metres away and there's a toilet block there. Um, please bring clean bikes to the start. So if you're coming from, you know, outside the region, you've had your bike is dirty, this brings foreign material into the parks here. It's a natural environment. We need to keep it pristine. So please clean your bikes before you, you, you come to the event. Um, and last but not least, presentations for the event. We'll be giving out prizes to first place in all categories, men and women. They'll start at 4 p.m. There's a lot to get through. So we'll be reading out the winners. Come up, collect your prize, go down. If you're not there, then you'll, you'll miss out on your prize. Uh, it's as simple as that, but that happens at four o'clock and the results will be shown. They're live. Um, there'll be a link on the website where where you can see the lot of results. Um, that'll be text to, uh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, on the website. Cool. Um, now, so, Bob, yeah, the race. So racing. Um, Obviously, Rego's open at 5.30. Uh, hopefully, you can, on Saturday morning, hopefully you got in there early on Friday and got your race packs. Then when you turn up and you've sorted out your parking, there's a staging pens uh, right behind the the, uh, the Pirates Clubhouse. Um, line yourself up in those staging pens. Um, they'll be by age category and they'll be by start order. Um, we'll then, uh, 15 minutes before, we'll call a last chance to get into your staging areas. Um, just understand that right opposite there, there's a bike locker and in a uh, bike, uh, secured bike area. And in that secured bike area, there will be the, um, or just ex the exit of the secure bike area, there will be the bottle drop. Bottle drop will be taken out to um, checkpoint two. Um, before, so it'll get there well before you do. Um, so you drop your bottles into the bottle drop. Um, there are stickers provided in your rego for you to label your bottles. Um, there's also a battery drop for those e-bikers out there. Um, so at about five to seven, the first group will be called up to the start line. Um, and then after that, uh, they'll leave right on 7 a.m. Um, and then after that, uh, people will be brought through in your age group categories. Um, if you start outside of your age group category, um, you'll be given the time that your age group started and penalised for starting out of your category. So nobody's sneaking up and trying to get on the wheel of an elite rider. Very important. Um, you are... All right. Um, so that's the staging. That first start is at seven o'clock um, and then approximately five minutes after that, the second start, and then three minute waves until we've gotten everybody in the 100 mountain bike out on course. Um, 
it's 800 metres to the first bit of single track, then you roll through some single track, um, then you roll past the netball courts and out onto McKinnon Drive. And as Matt said, there is a dedicated cycle lane there made with traffic cones um, on the fog line, on the shoulder of the road. Um, you must stay in single file along that sh along that um, that dedicated cycle lane. 500 metres later, you're turning left into um, some national park and uh, it's a big wide open fire road. Bang, go nuts. Um, that's where the race will be. The race will really start. Um, we've got signs out on course. You guys all seen this in the rider brief. Yellow is for the 100 mountain bike. Green is for the gravel and pink is for the 60 Ks. There's lots of corners. Make sure you keep your eyes open for those corners. Um, there's also orange tinsel, orange and yellow tinsel, um, streamers running through the forest um, to just um, um, keep you guys aware that you're on the right track. It's a proxy. It's, tape. it's absolutely, not it's not plastic. <laughs> I'd eat it now. I'm, I'm really hungry. Um, except I don't like carrots. Um, the, uh, they're every, approximately between every 100 and 200 metres, you'll see a piece of tape in the trees. Um, and that's the whole course round. Um, there are deviations where mountain bikers will turn and the gravel and the 60s might stay straight or the gravel and the 60s might deviate in different directions. Um, be very aware of those. There'll be a marshal there helping you. If somebody with a yellow number plate travels on the green course, um, their number will be taken and they will be removed from the results. Um, so the, no shortcutting, basically. Um, that's very important. Um, we've got marshals out there on course, so um, please use them. There are police going to be helping us. We've got police sweep riders um, and um, uh, there'll be some highway patrol as well, giving us a hand on McKinnon Drive. So if you do stray outside of that bike lane or if you try and overtake somebody, you may get a ticket. Just be aware, road rules everywhere. If there's traffic, you must give way to traffic as you would normally. Um, there are a few right turns there are marshals at those right turns to help you get across the road. Um, they won't stop cars for you. They will help you by telling you there's a car coming. Um, and I remind you that road rules apply. As Matt said, there's a couple of places where there's traffic control, so you should have a smooth run, specifically into Pomona. Um, you'll have a smooth run into the, the first checkpoint. Um, checkpoints have um, food, bananas, um, muffins, um, sports drink and water. So it should be good to go. Uh, refuel there. Um, we have um, crews of medics out on course. Um, it's a 100k course obviously and so it's a big area to cover. Um, we need you guys to help us uh, look after each other. So if you come across a rider down, this is a standard, most mountain bikers know it. If you come across a rider down, you stop and you uh, lend assistance. If that rider um, isn't getting up, you inform the next rider to go to the next marshal, which should be within um, six kilometers or so is the furthest distance between marshals. Um, you, you go to the next marshal and let them know they've got radio back to base. Um, on your number plate, is my mobile number. If you have any issues, you can't get a marshal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, call that mobile number. Um, call or text that mobile number and we will send out assistance to you. Um, yep. Mobile phone coverage is a little bit flaky in some areas, but um, if you make it to the marshals, the marshals, the radios will get back to us um, and they they will keep trying until they do. And we've got we've got three medical crews roving around the course, so they'll be able to get to you hopefully fairly fairly quickly. They'll be deployed as soon as we can. As soon as a medic or a marshal gets to you or one of our staff get to you, you can then leave that patient and you will be credited. If you complete the course, you will be credited the position you were when you rang through um, uh, to, um, to alert us of help. So don't worry about your race being impacted by you being a good person. Be a good person first. Um, there's, uh, so, um, yeah, so that's medical. Uh, there are cutoff times. It's 12 o'clock, you must be at Pomona. If you're doing the 60, you must be at Pomona checkpoint one 
by 12 o'clock. That gives you a lot of time to do about 30 kilometers. So everybody should make that. Um, but if you mechanical, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, and you don't make that, you will be asked to remove yourself from the race. You can take two choices to get home. You can sag wagon it, we provide a sag wagon, or you can make your own way home. Um, and typically it'll be a mechanical. Um, there's a limited amount of mechanical support in the sag wagon. Likewise, there's a mechanical support at checkpoints, limited amount of mechanical support at checkpoints. Um, the checkpoint uh, for the 100K and the gravel, you must be at checkpoint two by 1 p.m. So that's Kin Kin checkpoint. That's at Kin Kin. That means you've gotten over the mother. Um, so it's a big hill and you must have done that. Um, so one o'clock at Kin Kin. Um, and likewise, it's basically, we're giving you 10 hours to get home for a 100K race. It's 10 kilometers an hour. That's a bit faster than running speed. Um, and, it, and, if you, and if you don't make it at Kin Kin by one o'clock and we have to pull you out, we've got a sag wagons on course that'll come out and pick you up from Kin Kin. Yep, yep. Um, and there's a police uh, sweep rider behind you who will be assisting as well. So if you have a mechanical and you're not gonna make it, there should be a moto come past you at some stage and lend assistance, either get you to the nearest um, exit point where you can contact um, uh, a lift or uh, get you to the sag wagon. Uh, that's that. Don't forget, Matt mentioned it, the latest GPX files, download them, get them on your computer. There's also a Google map. If you don't use cycle computers, get that Google map, study the course, know exactly where you're going, understand where each of the checkpoints are, know your, uh, know the course. It's your responsibility to know your course. Um, and it's well signed, Mike, signpost, but it's, that's very important. And also with checkpoint two, your gravel riders, you come into Kin Kin from the opposite direction and you may think you can just cut through and go and not, not reach the checkpoint, but you need to pass checkpoint two for the gravel rider, which means you ride, need to ride through Kin Kin, around onto the oval, past the checkpoint, and I can take your number yep. and then you continue on your way. So that's a compulsory, compulsory number check in at checkpoint two. That's a mandatory. If you do not check in at checkpoint two, your result will be nulled. Um, so that's the Kin Kin checkpoint. Um, obviously, have a great time out there. It's going to be a fantastic race, Matt. Yep. Um, it's, the weather's going to be perfect. Um, the atmosphere in the village is going to be amazing. You guys are going to love it. You're going to get back, kick back, enjoy some live music. The guys have put on a fantastic show. Um, there's an expo site. There's food and beverages. Um, yep. We're going to have a fabulous time. It's yep. going to be a great afternoon. We're, we've set up a bike, secure bike parking, so you can put your backpack there all day. You can come in. There's some showers there. You can have a shower. You can spend some time in the village, enjoy the music, and maybe even have a beer. Have a couple. Who of knows? Beers. All you single speeders out there, the yep. beer's craft, so it's good for you. Yep. And uh, yeah, it should be a great day. Yeah, can't wait. See you out there. Thanks, guys.